In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a frequency distribution table. Remember the purpose of this channel is to help you pass your math class so you can reach your goals to get a better life. Creating a frequency distribution table coming right up. We're going to use a methodology. We're going to use the class width to find class limits, so we'll have to find that first. We're going to tally the data and then count the frequencies using the tallies. This data shows the rate of violent crime in the United States per 100,000 inhabitants from the year 1994, that's the first data point, 713.6, to the year 2013, the last data point, which is 367.9 and we're asked to construct a group frequency distribution using five classes. Our first task is to find that class width. And we'll need to find the max value of the data, the largest value of the data. That's 713.6. Then we're going to find the smallest value of the data, or the min value of the data. And that turns out to be 367.9 because as it turns out violent crime has been going down for these 20 years. Finally we're going to look at the range of the data. The range is the from the highest to the lowest. So that's 713.6 subtract 367.9 and when we're done with that we do that subtraction we see that the range is 345 Point seven. So the class width is the range divided by the number of classes. So that's 345.7 divided by 5. It's not going to be a nice whole number. It's going to be about, well, it's 69.14. But we always round this up. So we're going to round it up to 70. Next we need to figure out our class limits. So we normally uh, would start with the minimum, or we often would start with the minimum, uh, the minimum data value here you'll note is 367.9. We either start with the minimum data va value or the minimum data point or something very close to that. So I'm going to say the starting point here Instead of 367.9, I'm going to make it 367.5. The next value after that is 367.5 plus 70, so that's going to be 437.5. And the next data value after that, that's going to be 507.5. And these, these are going to be all my starting values for my lower class limits. So notice we have our lower class limits, 367.5, 437.5, etc. And we're going up to just below that. But there's a problem. There's a gap between 437.4 and 437.5. So what we need to do is split the difference. If I calculate 437.5, subtract 437.4, and divide by 2, that's 0 0.05. And what I can do is subtract that from 337.5 and then add it back in at the outer bound, uh, at the upper class limit, and it becomes 437.45. In this way, I will have class boundaries that are very clear. I'll never have any data point on the edge, and I don't have any gaps. Now what I have to do is count, and let's start from the uh, smallest here, so 367.9, three, that's in between 367.45 and 437.45, as is 387.8, as is 387.1, as is 405.1, as is 431.9. So I tally those up, there are five of them. Next, I have to count 
all of the data values between 437.45 and 507.45. So I start to do that. And I'm going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to get 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to get 9 of them. And I keep doing this. So when I'm done, I have counted every single data point, And if I add up the frequencies, I should get the number of data points, which is 20. So when we're done, we have the violent crime rates in the USA, um, our FBI statistics, and the important information is our class boundaries and our frequency. Next, we'd probably want to find out whether this is normally distributed or not. I would like to invite you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thanks very much for listening.